Wow, I never thought I would see myself making this video um, with this particular journalist and which I've made videos on this particular guy several times before and when I've called him out on his um, crap and also, um, he's blocked me because obviously people, some people can't face the truth and this video is about comic book um, movie.com's um, journalist Josh Wilden who is a pathetic little man child one of the first articles that he he's or he he's wrote um is Deadpool and Wolverine five signs this will be the movie that saves the Marvel Cinematic Universe now there are so many things that are wrong with that article now, it's particularly where he says um, that this saves the MCU, as it's abbreviated called. Now, that's basically admitting that the MCU, as we know it at, at the moment, isn't is is either flopping or not doing very well. Now, this is the same guy where 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 they've been re releasing recent um, Marvel related movie, whether it's been Madden Web. Or um, some of the other, um, or the or the Marvels. As soon as the um, obviously they're obviously the hype and the cut with the of casting or trailers or clips or polls that come out, Josh Wilder is the same guy that is sitting there, um, blowing his um, a smoke up his ass, going on about how how good the movie is, even though he's a, he actually hasn't seen it. And then as soon as the movie sits there and doesn't do very well, especially um, with the Marvels where see at the box office it didn't do very well and it, and it had very mixed reviews by um, certain critics and the normal cinema everyday goers what does he um what does josh Wilden do stop making stop making articles about it this is the same guy that was even defending um madden webb and was going on about how i'm um, saying how good the film was and then and then trying to defend it and then was only doing it because one of the particular um, the particular actresses in the Madam Web movie, which I'll let people work out who that is, was attractive, and because she was um, and because she's got big boobs, and then started and then started salivating, which I find absolutely disgusting, and that was his reasoning behind. Um, him defending um, defending the movie, not about whether or not the actresses or the actors in the movie were up to snuff, or um, the actual storyline, or maybe the critics were a bit were being hard done by by the actual movie, but because of how attractive and how the the particular actress in question actually looked, and I find that absolutely absolutely disgusting. So. He's basically admitting that the MCU needs um, that needs saving, and the on the movie that can only do that at the moment is Deadpool and, and Wolverine. But yeah, over the past um, year or so, when the Marvel movies haven't been doing very well, when they've dropped off since people have been saying since Marvel, sorry, since Avengers Endgame, he was defending all all the all the Marvel movies. Now you're admitting that Deadpool and Wolverine needs to save the MCU. Uh, am I missing? Am I missing something? Secondly, we haven't even seen the movie yet. Now I know that. Well, I, I do know that they were doing some more, some more post production on actual movie, which is due for a release in July, sometime world worldwide, and. I hope, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that the movie not, not only is very good, but does very well at the box office and is well received. But you can't base one movie, for example, on on saving on saving the MCU. You need um, movies back to back to back to back. Once, they, once for example, the um, Marvel or Stroke Disney released... Um, the new set of Marvel movies, whether it's um, the sequel to Black Panther um, 2, it was Black Panther 3, for example, 
um, the Fantastic Four, which they are now are going to be working on. X-Men, which they're going to be um, working on. And then their new set of Avengers movies. Once the, these movies are, are, for example, are well received and do well at the box office, then you can sit there and say um, that the MCU has been saved. Exactly the same thing with the DCU, where the DCU has been, let's just face it, has been off to a rocky start since day one, which some films have been hit and miss. And we know the problems behind um, with the DCU and Warner Brothers, where there's where there's no been no leadership, um, no direction in terms of where they want the story of the of the stories to go with the different DC characters, and hence why it's been in a mess. But one movie can't save a entire a entire um, franchise. For, similar thing with every day again. Once you sit there and you start releasing good quality movies again and then they're successful and, make, and putting bums on the seats and then making money and the general public and the critics love the movies then it's been saved but you can't base it on a movie which you haven't even seen and again as i said i'm not um i'm not unlike josh wilding who can't seem to be objective I hope it does do well, because for me, as a comic book fan, um, even though I, I, I've, I'm a big Wolverine fan and um, Hugh Jackman's interpretation of it, it will be interesting to see how they tie this in to the MCU going forward and introducing the X-Men and other new characters that they'll be putting in, that will be seeing forward in the future of the MCU movies. So even I'm excited to see where it's, where it's going. Yes, I admit, I wasn't a big fan of the second Deadpool movie, even though I do own it. But I loved the first the first Deadpool movie. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was absolutely funny. For me, it's just where the second movie for me, um, I just wasn't feeling it. But I still bought the movie because, again, what did it complete my collection? Again, I'm a comic book fan of both Marvel and DC. So I'm not one of these ones where I'm going to play, I'm going to, at like um some of these silly little fanboys where it's oh I hate I hate Marvel I hate DC blah 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 I'm not that kind of a guy I want all of them to do well if they do well and I like the movies and when I do my reviews or I buy the Blu-rays or I see the movies at the cinema I will praise it if I feel that it's not very good I'm gonna slater it because I'm not I because I'm not owned by any company. What you see with me is what you get, 100% uh, honesty. I'm not going to sit there and um, say controversial things or say, say things just to sit there to make people happy and to get some subs on my YouTube channel just to make, um, um, you know, to get, um, you know, like being negative or being hateful so that I get um, more subscri subscribers. I'd rather sit there and have a low subscriber user base Knowing the fact that I'm being upfront and honest by how I feel about a particular product, movie, video game, etc., etc. Whereas Josh Wilden, who, as I said a million times before, has blocked me, can't seem to be um, very honest with his um, objectivity about comic book related um, um, material. And he's working for a site comicbookmovie.com which is supposed to be about comic book related movie material and he's pro marvel but hates dc that doesn't make that doesn't make sense to me so that leads me onto his second article which by the way i am going to um put up on my um um on my on my on my community page so you can see it for yourself um and for those of you who follow me on twitter you can see um it's um what he said so you can see from my perspective that i haven't um made it up and i've already um put up um a post in regards of 
Josh Wilding being exposed and so far I've got 27 views already. And that's less than five minutes after I've posted it. His second article he's put, he's, I don't know why he's obsessed with five things that work, five things that don't, six things that work, seven things that work. So his next article is, six mistakes DC Studios have already made with the new e DCU. Now, already, that doesn't make any physical sense. Now, we know that James Gunn and um, his colleague have recently um, taken, um, taken helm of the of the dcu or, or whatever it is they want it or whatever it is they decide to call it they decided to call it now and they obviously started from scratch and obviously um they his first film under his um under his helm will be the superman film which is slated for a 2025 release date which i think it's a, i think it's june it's meant to be coming out in 2020 in 2025 now how the hell can you sit there and, and make and, and then write six things that um that they've already done for um that they that they've already done for D for the DCU to have failed. Now, as far as I know, unless um I have a DeLorean and I've or I've got a TARDIS, the first movie under his um under um James Gunn's helm, as I've said before, is Superman, which is scheduled to release this time next year 2025 aside from that one shot that they released of david cornsweet in his suit we haven't seen any of any footage of the actual movie we know the, the acts some of the actors that they've cast so far and what roles that they're going to be playing obviously like lex luther and some of the um and Guy Gardner, obviously, who's Green Lantern, and we know, obviously, um, you know, some, some and some and Hawk and Hawk and Hawkman, Hawk Girl, they're, they're going to be in it, and other characters that that they're going to be releasing, and Perry White and Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen. Now, it's pretty obvious that they're probably going to have more than one villain for um, Superman to to sink his chops into. Not just going to be Lex Luthor. We don't even know what other villains are going to be in in the in, in the actual movie. We've not even seen a trailer for the movie. We don't even know what the movie is supposed to be about. Now we do know that it's not going to be a straight out and out origin story because that's been told time and time again, and everybody knows Superman's origin. So, explain to me. From Josh Wilden's perspective, how the DCU's failed. We do know that James Gunn was um um his first chapter, as he said, is he as it's titled is Gods and Monsters. He wants to do um DC animated movies where the voice actors that play the characters, the DC characters, whether it's villains or heroes in the animated movies or animated series, um, that he wants the same voice actors to be playing the live action um, version of the of the DC char of the DC character. So everything's going to be tied tied into one con continuity, which is a great idea. So we do know that. His idea is he's trying to plan what he essentially wants to do with certain characters. And then maybe one day later on along the line, we will get a Justice League movie or a Justice League Society or even a Justice League Dark. Who knows? Because he wants to plan out the movies and start introducing the characters like they've always been around. Now, this is something that Warner Brothers and this is on them and a big mistake from them. That they should have done from the very beginning, like what the MCU did, where the MCU started with showcasing characters like Iron Man for Captain America, and then you give each of those characters sequels um, in their own franchise, 
and then start introducing other characters in their movies like black widow um appeared in um the, the captain america sequel and they would later appear in the avengers movie etc 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 and then you and then once you establish that especially if somebody isn't necessarily comic book savvy with the comic like most people didn't realize that um Unless you're a comic book fan, but Iron Man was a man in a suit. Some people thought he was actually an actual robot, but unless you're a comic book fan, you wouldn't have known that. But you establish these characters in their individual movies, then you give them a team up movie. Once that becomes successful, you can make a, a second Avengers movie like what they did. Then you can sit there and go on to the next phase and the next phase and start introducing other heroes. And then those side characters that were introduced in other movies can then have their own movies. This is the reason why that under Kevin Feige, the way he initially grew the MCU, he did it the exactly the right way in the beginning, which is what something that DC should have done. Instead of just throwing it all together with no planning. Now, it was different um, under, for example, when they did the Dark Knight trilogy with Christopher Nolan because there was a sense of obviously you make Batman Begins the, the Dark Knight and then the Dark Knight Rises there was a sense of planning on what um, Christopher Nolan wanted to do with that with that movie and a similar thing with the, with the Batman where well, hopefully we'll, we will be getting the Batman too and, or, and then we'll be getting the Penguin um, series which ties into the Batman it's a sense of kind of progression a storyline we do know that there's going to be a Supergirl movie and they want there to be a Green Lantern Corpse movie. And eventually, you know, obviously there will be a new um, Wonder Woman movie and there's going to be a Batman, a Brave and a Bold. But all these things are years down the line. But according to Josh Wilden, it's already failed. Now, as I said before, unless he's got a TARDIS or a DeLorean, um... I'm calling him out. I would love for him to explain how it's failed when we haven't seen anything. It would be different if the movies were put out. They, the, the movie, the storylines weren't very good. And the critics and the normal people like you and me, the everyday cinema goers, didn't like the movies and they weren't doing well at the box office. Then we could sit there and say, you know what, right? Um... We don't like the direction or what they're currently doing with whether it's the MCU now or with what they're going to be doing in the future, the for in the foreseeable future with the MC with the DCU. But we haven't seen anything. We haven't seen any footage for Superman. We've not seen any behind the scenes, full up of the costume in motion, the effects of the movie, the storyline, a trailer. Nothing, but according to him, it's failed already. Now, this sounds like a man who wants something to fail, and this is something that I've um that I mentioned on um, earlier on today on my Twitter social page where I went on a rant with people constantly being negative about everything in life, and that kind of and and I don't kind of like that because negative because being around a negative aura or negative people just bring just brings you down. And even with people who are negative with everything in life, it doesn't. You heard the old saying, um, um, "Misery loves company." And sometimes there are people in life where if then if things are going well in their life and Thing, you know, things are going great for them. That if they can't be happy, nobody else can be happy. So what do they do? They have to bring everybody down because they're not happy. So everybody just has to sit there and fail. I am not a believe. I am not a believer in negativity and wanting people to fail just because things may not be going well in your life or you enjoy the misery of others of in people and suffering. That's just a, a told that just says a lot about people. 
who have that mentality. Yes, sometimes in life things don't go the way you, you want to go, but you dust yourself off, you pick yourself up, and you try to do the best you can in life. There's no handbook in life telling you um, how life is supposed to be. Life is, is, is a learning process. But when you have people like Josh Wilding that, that want things to fail, I just don't understand that. Then, obviously, as I've said, he's blocked me on um, on Twitter. But I do get people who follow him, so they send me screenshots of what he actually um, writes on his um, Twitter page. So you can have, have, have a look for yourself. So he puts on his... Um, he puts on his um, t um on his Twitter, I don't like this suit, and puts and then puts a smiley face. Now, we clearly know, as I said before, that he doesn't like DC. So what I don't understand is, why are you writing for a comic book movie site when you clearly hate DC? If that particular site just focused on Marvel and that's all it was focused on because that's what they choose to focus on, I would have no prob problem with that. For example, in the gaming side of things, there are some people that, um, that YouTubers and, and websites that just focus on one particular console format. So, for example, Nintendo Life just focuses on Nintendo. It doesn't focus on PlayStation. And it doesn't focus on Xbox or PC or Steam. And that's fine. But it would be like somebody um, going on there on, say, Nintendo Live and then complaining to them that they're not posting stuff about PlayStation or about Xbox. You know what you're getting. You know what the site is focused on because it's called Nintendo Live. There are some YouTubers that focused um, solely on Xbox because that's the the, the the machine they like. That's the video games they like. Same thing with PlayStation. Same thing with Nintendo. Now, me, if you've seen on my channel, you've seen me unbox and do gameplay on Xbox-related products. You see me do PlayStation and you see me do Nintendo. Now... The only reason why I don't stream a lot of playthroughs on Nintendo games is because the, the Nintendo consoles aren't capable of streaming. Whereas for me at the moment, when I'm streaming PlayStation or Xbox games, um, they allow me to either stream um, PlayStation games um, directly from the console or record from them. Now, an easy way around it would be if I had a computer and an Elgato card, and then it wouldn't matter. At the moment now, I'm going to be straight up and be honest with you. I can't afford that at the moment. I've seen other friends of mine who do YouTube, and then they, and a lot of most people use the Elgato um, um, way of streaming. Um, consoles rather than the consoles doing it and then they can stream nintendo stuff steam xbox playstation game Boy, whatever it is they want to they want to do now i'm hoping fingers crossed in that in the foreseeable future that i will be able to go down that line and then i will be rather than streaming directly from the consoles or recording from the consoles then i can Stream. I can use the Elgato um, card and uh, um, a PC or whatever it is um, computer to capture to capture my video um, footage um, with some um, Xbox and PlayStation and especially Nintendo. And it's not even so much necessarily all the Switch stuff, but even a lot of the my classic Super Nintendo stuff that I have. My I have a Super I have a, um, a Super Nintendo Mini. My NES collection, my Super, my GameCube collection. Eventually, I want to get an N sixty four back again. My Wii, um, my Wii, my Wii U, my GameCube. But it's only because it can't stream. So I'm fortunate that the Xbox and the PlayStation allow me to stream. Now I love doing this. Now for me, 
I love all of these consoles, and, and I know I see these silly fanboys um, fighting on um, on social media, whether it's on Twitter or X, as it's known as, or on YouTube, where you see people fighting. It's like oh, where the the Xbox fanboys start attacking the PlayStation fanboys, and the PlayStation fanboys start attacking them. Um, X um, start attacking the Xbox, and so it's Xbox fanboys fighting the PlayStation, the PlayStation fighting Xbox. And for me, for me, I find it ridiculous because for me. First and foremost, it's about the enjoyment about it's the for me the enjoyment of video games. That's why I became a I've always been um an avid gamer since I was a since I was a kid. Because I've always loved video games. And back in when I was young, when I had an NES, which I started with in a Super Nintendo and my mate let me borrow his Mega Drive, I wish I could have and back in the day, you had the Super Nintendo Wars and Mega Drive Wars. And I wish I'd have had the money to have been able to buy a Mega Drive as well. So I would have had the Super Nintendo and Mega Drive. And there's so many other consoles I wanted, like the Dreamcast, um, the Saturn. There's so many consoles that I, that, I, that I wanted to own. And it wasn't about for me about pigeonholing myself in just supporting one console manufacturer. It was just a factor of, of money. And not being able to afford to, you know, to buy, to have all the consoles. Things have been a little bit, di are a little bit different now as I've been older. Because I, I was fortunate enough to buy the Switch myself. And my nephew um, kindly um, gave me a PS5 and an Xbox, um, Series X. And then I've had, and I still have a, P a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, a PSP, um, an Xbox One S. And and I'm getting into all the games, like whether it's on the Nintendo console, whether it's Mario, Zelda, Star Fox, Metro, which Metro 4, 4 I'm looking forward to. And I'm loving all these games. Xbox, whether it's Halo, and whether it's Gears of War, Fours that I'm absolutely loving. And these are console exclusives. PlayStation, whether it's been Uncharted, um, whether it's been um, the... Uh, Grand Gran Turismo, even from back from the PlayStation 1. Games like Tekken, Metal Gear. And then, even when I have want, been have the ability to buy games which are on are, are multiple formats. So, for example, you can have a game that's both available on the PS5 and the Series X. I have, sometimes I just choose um, to buy it on Xbox or the PS5, depending on... Which one is cheaper? So, the last game I bought was Watch Dogs Legion. And I bought that for three quid second hand for the Xbox Series X. But to buy that second hand for the PS5, it would have cost me eight quid. But it doesn't matter. But it didn't matter to me. Because I'm going to get the same experience. And I've got all, and I have all the consoles. So it doesn't matter. Now, again, as I said, and I'm drifting off here. But the point I'm making is that. If you like one format or something, that's fine. So if a site, if a YouTuber or a site says they're solely um, focused on Xbox, they're solely focused on Nintendo or, or PlayStation, that's fine. But when you're calling yourself a comic book movie site and Josh Wilding clearly doesn't like DC, then why are you writing DC articles for? When your site is called Comic Book Movie, it's not called Comic Book Marvel, is it? Now, he's supposed to be a journalist, which he quite clearly, which he quite, which he quite clearly isn't, especially with his grammar. Now, I don't have a problem with him preferring Marvel. Or somebody preferring DC. That's fine. The people have their reasons. Whether it's to do with the maturity of the storylines. Or maybe it's because of characters that they can relate to. That's fine. But at least, at least come out and say, you know what? I prefer Marvel. Or I prefer DC. So this is what I'm going to focus on. That's fine, but when you're but when you're going on a site wanting DC to fail, 
going onto your personal Twitter, basically um, slagging off every, everything DC, and then still writing DC articles on a comic book movie site, which is supposed to be about everything comic book related, you're not being objective. And this is why I'm calling Josh Warden out. And for me, he's exposed himself. I don't want to sit there making videos, attacking somebody and having a go at somebody. And I didn't want to sit there and make a video doing this. And doing this kind of thing on my YouTube channel. I try to do on my YouTube on my YouTube channel, I try to be positive and to be entertaining. I know there's a lot of um, YouTubers out there or on people on social media that want to be outraged about everything because we seem to be living in this outraged culture. And then they do seem to be outraged about anything and everything. Because they want to get clicks, which gets them, which gets them the more the more of the subs and gets them makes them more money and gets them more viewership. I'm not about that. As I've said in my videos multiple times, I'm hard, I'm nearly, I'm small fry when it comes to being a YouTuber. I'm halfway to seven hundred YouTube subs. I'm not affiliated on Twitch either, so I'm not making any money. Now, if I could make money from YouTube and Twitch out of something I love doing and a passion I love doing, that for, for me would be a bonus. But for me, this is just a hobby or for me to showcase the things that I love. And maybe you educate people on some certain things that they don't know about with stuff to do with movies or comic book stuff. Or maybe you find like-minded people who like the same things I do. Like one of my, one of my neighbours... Bumped into me, and then he, he said to me, "Oh, um, um, I saw that. Um, asked me what about what I've been up to, and I hadn't seen him in a few months. Told him I was doing a YouTube channel, and he asked me what do I do on YouTube. And I said to him, I do mostly video game stuff, and I do comic book stuff. So he asked me, what comic book stuff do you do? I said, I said to the guy, and I'm running for years, many many years." I've known him since he was a kid. He said to me, um, he's a big comic book fan himself. He loves Marvel and he loves DC. So the first thing he said to me was, um, what's the name? What's the name? Of the, what's the name of my channel? So I showed him on my phone and he said to me, you know what? I'm going to subscribe to your channel and I'm going to have a look at your videos. So, few, so this was like a, a while ago. And then a, a few weeks ago, saw him again. And he said to me, Oh, I really loved. Um, I was looking for your channel, and I really enjoyed your comic book stuff. That stuff you stuff that you did with Superman, stuff that you've done with Spider Man and X Men. And he really loved. And he said to me um, that he he loves anything that is super related, whether it's DC or it's Marvel. And in fact, he said to me that he wanted me to do even more stuff to do with comic book related stuff. And I've said to him, you know what, the only reason why I don't is because it's so time consuming and I don't want to bombard people's um, videos, um, people's um, notification with, with videos I'm uploading. And sometimes I've had personal stuff going on in my life and health problems. So that's why I, have, I want to do a lot more stuff, comic, comic book stuff and graphic novels and um, animated movies. And I want, to, I want to do a lot more stuff, but it's just finding the time and the day to do it. And he said to me, he really, really loved my channel because he's, again, because he's a comic book fan. And he loved the DC and Marvel and he absolutely loved it. And when you hear somebody telling you stuff like that, for me, I absolutely felt overjoyed and overwhelmed that somebody loved what I was doing. And when somebody sits there and tells you that, it then gives you more impetus to sit there to want to carry on and to want to do more. So, I want to sit there and do um, more of my statue um, um, unboxing, which I've got a few more to do. And I've got some over Christmas. And I keep saying this about my graphic novels and um, Marvel and DC. I'm going to go back and do some of my old um, um, Marvel and DC movies um, that I've watched. You know, like the first Iron Man movie with Robert Downey Jr., which I absolutely love. And I want to go back and do a, review, a movie review of that. 
with the because I know I've done some of the newer stuff, but I want to do stuff like that. You've seen me showcase my collection of um, um the X-Men animated series, seasons one to one to five, which I know it's hard to get on DVD. The Spider-Man animated series that was on Fox. I've got the comp complete collection of that on DVD, which I I, I wish to God that Marvel or some that Disney's listened that released released this stuff remastered on Blu-ray because it would look so good. And even as of all that Spider-Man animated Fox, the ones on Fox, it's been deleted now. Um, to, it's, it's out of print, but you can still buy it second hand. But it's expensive. There was the two um, Iron Man <coughs> um, animated series that were on Fox. I want to I want to watch that again. I want to watch um, the X Men animated series. Watch seasons one to five because obviously X Men ninety seven now it's finished now and we won't get another season of that until next year. I want to go through and watch all that again. Um, the the Spider Man in his Amazing Friends. I want to go back and watch that. The Fantastic Four um, animated series, which I want to go back and watch that again. There's so many stuff I want to watch and I want to do a review of that things like Smallville. I want to um, go back and watch that again um go back and watch, um, watch that again and because i've already done this review season one i want to do season two and all the way to season 10 and i'm trying to collect um as much as i can of the dc animated movies that have been out i've got and watched a, a lot of them which i haven't and i still do more i want or, i want to collect so there's so much stuff that I, so uh, there's so much comic book stuff that i've that i've got that i've got to do and graphic novels dc i've got marvel i've got tons of stuff to do and then when you're hearing like my friend and other people saying to me that they they're absolutely loving it that just shows you how much of a passion that i, that I have for comics and as i said before i'm 48 now and i've been collecting comics dc and marvel for 40 years I'm gonna go back and sh um and start doing picking up in my videos of showing you my um comic book collect collection over the past forty years. I did um I think two or three videos, but I still need to do more because it's very time consuming. But and I've had even my own family members say to me, "Oh, you should throw out your comics." I'm not. I can't do that. It's a part of my life, and some of them are actually worth money, but. It's not the mon monetary value. It's the love, the labour of love, of these comic book, of of these comics. I did a review of the Superman ex um, extended cut, which I which is a long one, but I absolutely loved it. And again, Deadpool movie, whether or not I see it in the cinema, or I see it on Blu-ray, wherever, wherever I see it, I'm going to be looking forward to watching that. You you got Logan there. Absolutely loved that movie. It was just so different from the traditional um, superhero movies. So this, I'm, so this is why I'm saying I'm, I'm not reading off a script. I'm speaking off the cuff of the heart. And this is why I said, well, I don't like having to make videos like this when you've got <coughs> people like Josh Wilden, <coughs> pardon me, that clearly hates DC for some reason. Again, if you, as I said before. If you don't like DC, which you clearly don't seem to like it on your Twitter, and you've kind of made it clear that you don't like it on Cobra But Marvel and you want it to fail, stop writing articles about it. Just focus on writing on what you love doing on Marvel articles and let somebody I'm sure there's 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 other journalists that who write for a comic book movie that could probably write uh, something to do with DC and be objective. But you've made it clear that you don't like DC. So stop writing about DC. Because you don't like them. And that's your prerogative. That's the choice you've made. If you like, if you like Marvel, Marvel, fine. I'm not going to sit there and attack him for not liking it. The reason why I call him a Marvel shoe is because you slag off DC, which you don't like. And you keep continuously doing it. You've made it. You've made it clear in your in your article six things why the D, why the DCU you, why the DCU's already already failed. They haven't released a bloody movie yet under um, James uh, under James Gunn yet, and you can't count Blue Beetle because that was there before him. So quite clearly, you want it to fail because it's not Marvel. 
So somebody explain to me how something, for example, having DCU has failed. You can say, yes, if you're looking at certain past movies that were released under Warner Brothers Watch that have failed and been critically um, panned by critics or or haven't done well at the box office. If you want to attack that for what's happened in the past because it hasn't done very well or critics haven't liked it, fine. Because they've already come out. So if you don't like Wonder Woman 2, Wonder Woman 1984, fine. Because it's already come out. If you don't like the Justice League, um, the cut that, that they made, the original cut they made, fine. Because it's come out. You can criticise it. You can, you can critique it. You can criticise it. If you don't like the Flash movie because of the what Ezra Miller done, or you don't like the, the story of it, or you don't like the effects of it, fine. Because it's come out. So you can attack it. If you don't like Superman Returns, fine. The movie came out decades ago. You can attack it. Because the movie's was as has already been released. You can you can you can critique it and say you don't like it. That's fine. But you can't sit there and say something has failed when you haven't seen when you haven't given wrongly or rightly to see what Joshua uh, sorry to see what James Gunn is gonna be cooking under his first chapter of God's and monsters. Let the movies come out. Then criticise it. It would be like. I'll give you an example. You've. Um, Liverpool now. Ha obviously ha have now. Have got a new manager now. Because. Um, Kl because. Jür Jürgen Klopp now. Decided to step down. From Liv um, this season. Um. At being the being a manager, um, the culture manager at Liverpool, and now Arnie Slot is the new Liverpool manager now, and we know that Klopp has set such a huge legacy at Liverpool with the type of football and the players that they managed to get in the youth academy, and the trophies that they've won under his time at Liverpool. But it would be like me turning around and saying, "Oh." Six reasons why um, Arnie Slot has failed at Liverpool. When he hasn't even managed, when he hasn't even been given time to stamp his style of football on Liverpool, and he's not even he's not even um, played a game with, with his team yet, or had a full season or two. So it'd be like me saying, "Oh, oh, oh, you know what." Um, Arnie Slot's gonna um, Arnie Slot's gonna fail at Liverpool. Oh, um, yeah, but, but, but it doesn't matter where he's gonna fail because I know he's gonna fail. But you, but unless I've got a crystal ball, you have to give people the. In, and this is what I mean about life. You have to give people, or it'd be like giving somebody a, giving somebody a job at doing something, and maybe they don't have the experience at, at doing it yet. But you have to gain, you have to learn experience to gain experience. And it will be like giving somebody, um, a um, giving somebody a chance to do a job. And if I was giving somebody a job, even if I, I, I would at least, if I was saying employing somebody to do a job for me, and I was unsure about whether or not I, I thought the person was going to be good, good regardless of their, of their credit credentials. It's commonplace that some people in the workplace are given trials. So they're given like a month or two trial at that workplace to see how productive they are in that workplace. If they then prove their worth, they're given their full, they're given the full job. But you don't fail them before they've done before they haven't done anything. And I think that's very unprofessional from Josh Wilden. And again, as I said, I don't want to be sitting there making these long ass videos moaning about that guy. Because obviously, well, he's blocked me. He doesn't he doesn't care about what I think. 
again, because I've called him out. But it's about, for me in life, it's about being professional. If that site was called Comic, Comic Book Marvel and it was focused on, on focused just doing stuff on Marvel, it it would make sense. But you're hating on, on DC with anything they do, even before they do what they do under the new... Um, helm of um, of James Gunn, but then you st- but then you write an article slagging them off, but then you don't like them. And one final thing, on another analogy, you see me um, do a lot of um, products to do with Apple, whether it's to, whether it's whether it's um, iPhones, um, iWatches, or even accessories to do with Apple, right? But also. There's other um, companies that you other people can go to. You don't have to go to Apple. You can go. There's Android. So if you want to get an, a laptop, you don't have to go and get an, 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 a MacBook. You can get an Android based laptop, probably far cheaper. You can get an Android phone. Don't have to get an, an iPhone. You can get an Android tablet or. A, or um, you can get um, an Android-based watch. Now, me being honest, the reason why I like I like Apple, despite the fact their products are too expensive, is the fact that I love the build quality and I love the interface. I've always I've always loved, especially with the iPhones and the laptops. I just prefer the interface of iOS. For me, it's just far more simpler. So, for example, when I had um, a, um, a MacBook and then I had my phone, syncing it up um, with when it comes to um, my Apple Mail, which I, I love, by the way, when it comes to, especially when it comes to get rid of junk mail and spam mail. I just love the way that Apple sync their software and their products. So, um, you can interface your phone to, to your laptop and it's just simple. Same thing um, of recent when I when I got my iWatch Ser- Series 9. And obviously you've got the fitness app on there. Everything is interconnected. So when my phone is active, I can... Everything is all connected from my, I, from my um, iPhone to my iWatch. And it's just simple. And for me, it's, it's just simple. I just love the interface. Most of my cousins... Have Android, and that's what they prefer. Now, of all all the products that I've done on my um, YouTube channel, I've been Apple. It and and the rival and the rivals are, are Android based stuff, especially when they're releasing their new phones. Just because I don't review their products doesn't mean I. It doesn't mean I hate it. Now maybe in the future, who knows? I might do Android stuff if I, if 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 ever something comes into something that I product that I might want. But just because I like Apple, it doesn't mean that I hate Android or, or want it to fail. Even though I prefer Apple, it's just that it's what I prefer. I just I, I just like Apple. As I said before, build quality, the interface. If you're somebody that loves Android, for whatever reason, you know, this, this, because there's something about it that you prefer, you know, they often say that Android phones are, are, are far more advanced than the iPhone, which is which is fine, and it, and it's cheaper. That's fine too. That's perfectly fine. But just because I'm more pro leaning to Apple, I'm not going to slag off Android and rip into it, or... I'm not going to turn around and say Android is crap or it's rubbish because I don't use it. And it would be unfair of me to do so because I have because I don't use it. And it's a similar analogy, as I said before, with Josh Wilden. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll leave you with this. I want to say, say to with anybody that's um, that's listened to this um, nearly hour long video. Really think about. What Josh Josh Wilden is doing. You're working for a site 
that is comic book related. It's not associated with image solely. It's not solely focused on Marvel. And it's not solely focused on DC. It's supposed to be comic book related. Anybody, and I'm calling anybody out, I'm calling Josh Wilder and any of the journalists that are working for that site. Anybody that sits there and wants anything, to find, whether it's Marvel or whether it's DC or if it's Image or whoever it may be, is not a true comic book fan. If you are a journalist and that's what you set yourself out to be, be objective. That is something that I do with any review that I do of any of my products is that I try to be objective. You're never going to be, you're never going to get it 100% perfectly. But for the most part, you try to be objective. And I'll say this with Josh Wilden. If you do not like anything associated with DC, then stop writing articles about DC. Focus on Marvel and let somebody else that is objective write the articles. Or better yet, leave comic book Marvel. Comic book Marvel, I'm being, I'm being facetious. Leave comic book movie, um, movie.com, set up your own site focused on Marvel or work for a site that is focused on Marvel. If you sit there and you cannot sit there and be objective in the articles you write, then stop writing articles. Full stop about comic, about comic book related stuff because you are not a comic book fan or not a true comic book fan. All you are is that you're just being a show, you're just trying to be, you're just trying to cause outrage so that you get clicks and hits, rather than sitting there and writing something that is informative and objective, which is what I try to do. And again, as I said, I'm not perfect, but I try to be. And one final thing, all these stupid people posting these, um, 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 these fuzzy, um, unfocused shots on David Cornsweet's um, suit in the new Superman movie and saying the suit looks bad and you can't see anything. Bloody grow up because you can't see anything on the, of the images. Rant over. <laughs>